jumping back into it here for the C-Val Grand Finals. A look once more at the prize that both of these teams are reaching out to get. Ferbsa now won. Uh, Ferbsa. Well, sure. We'll, we'll call it Ferbsa. Ferbsa <laughs> University. Northwood now one map ahead, reaching a little bit closer to that trophy dryad. And it did feel like that was going to be the biggest challenge, right? Yeah. That map number one where Winthrop yesterday and overall in their history playing that Haven always looks so good. So it feels like, you know, the, the one thing that the Norwood squad was thinking of is make sure that there's no chance that it, this is going to go 13-11, that this is going to go overtime as it has in the past. And they do just that. And now we get to see that map number two of Fracture. Yeah, we now we're, we're lined up here for this one. I don't think we're going to see any of the crazy stuff that we get on the screen here. Uh, this was a map, uh, again, another very close uh, game uh, for Winthrop University in that Fisher series, but one where they were able to pull it out. Now, they did start a little rocky, right? They did end up losing map one. So there is a world where Winthrop, that right there, they just left all the nerves out on the server. Yeah. Coming into Fractured, things look a little different. And remembering that for Winthrop, they always have that slow start, and we talked about it. Darkest, you had to walk in the rain, Emmett. <laughs> this guy, Darkest said he his signature agent is Reyna. We haven't seen that, I think, ever. But I want to see the Reyna, no? No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know who wants to, to see the Reyna. I think me. you and Winthrop fans want to see the Reyna. <laughs> I think we'll know how that, that map will go. Not to take away from, from Darkest's ability uh, to play that agent. As we queue things up, getting ready to jump into this. Uh, essentially the same from what we saw previously. Collegiate really likes, especially our top three teams, really enjoys a strong, fast-paced, double duelist fracture. We yeah. saw it the other day. We get it again here. I think what's kind of notable about this one, especially for Northwood University, is it's Dip that plays the Jet, right? It's the IGL who hops off the info role and is now playing something a bit more explosive. And this is something that Dip has talked about. He says, no matter what I'm playing, the main thing is that the team is listening to me and I'm able to make the calls that I want to dip on the roll is not really a challenge he's still gonna put the same amount of effort to get kills to support the team in the way that he needs to on this specific role as he would be on any other role any other agent so definitely eyes on dip and this out of northwood for this one and another point as well the both of the teams here they're playing the same composition that they played for the upper final that time when they played it was a 13-7 going for the side of northwood uh, but the one thing that is going to be the one win condition is shutting down that jet entry both from moops and from dip and that's going to be the role in so many scenario stores that b-side uh off the cyphers and what they can do with the trap wires being a little bit more creative and trying to slow things down yeah definitely looking uh you know to transition from igls into those sentinel players rip benji is a uh, a pretty hammered out sentinel player that's it that's kind of the role that he fills for his team meanwhile on the other side the sentinel for this map it isn't comey who historically or, or usually the majority of the time plays that it's a 77 so we will see how they play off of that utility first little bit though as he yeah. plays across the map trap wire to spot the attack for now winthrop looking to find ways into a man they'll be met by three players northwood we're ready here for this one, A77. We talked about what his utility might be, unfortunately. It's not going to be a whole lot here in this one as the crunch comes through the A site. Moves is trying to fight his way back into this one. Spike is planted. Two line up. Moves knocks him down. And this one suddenly, Dryad, becomes winnable for Winthrop. And the plan, even from the beginning, was good. Taking that north and that south part of the map. A 2v2 to deal with then retake as well for the pistol. Yeah, Ollie heard on the drop. Good shots from Nazi. Wants to try and find some more as Benji backs away, expecting the push from moves. It did not matter. Four kills in the pistol and Winthrop strike early. And a move starting hot early for this one. Pissed around going to the side of Winthrop. With a really good idea towards the beginning, they have two players in the side of the part in the map. They try to take the host control on A and they play for that timing to break uh, what you saw that side for Yuto towards Dish, and then they go in all the wraparound to get that spike planted and play for post. A good pistol here, take it into account that the ones that we saw on the map number one didn't really go the way of this Winthrop squad. And you want to start strong for this one. Yeah, a, a strong start and a strong purchase here in round two moves. Bringing a rifle into this one. We'll see if they can walk out with it. 
Well, and speaking of walking, we've got five players here from Winthrop, but on the top side of the map, they're getting lots of info. And this is something that with that U2, A77 was going to know, but still, Spy gonna get planted. The two players yeah, that were on B end up backing up. Yeah, Benji can only hope that somebody pushes up into the towers as he plays and holds his ground with the shorty. Verbs to find the first kill. Here on the round, but Winthrop starts to fight back the pistols. Last doing the trick for just a moment, but again, moves lines him up. He wants another 4K. He'll get another 4K. And that's gonna be those eight kills in the first two rounds of Fracture. Haven here. was not gonna longer be that possibility, but Fracture is a reset and another story. We got to see moves as the team was chatting, was talking a little bit in between those maps. And, and you can see this guy is so calm. He's looking down, he's listening, he's talking a little, giving a little comments. But when it comes to going in for this map and for this match, the way that he's playing is insane because of that blade storm. Gonna be available for him. Gonna be right in. Get right on into it here. Not slowing down at all. He's tossed over that rifle as well. Unfortunately, the knives have been dealt with. Winter, we're hoping to get a bit more. I mean, Furbs, it gets another one on the way out. Two kills. The way of the raise here for Northwood. Flair, though, fights his way in. Oh, no! It gets weird for a second, but another multi-kill from a duelist of Winthrop finds himself in the driver's seat again, Dryad. And for a second, you see moves, you see him going in and playing that aggressive style that we talked about. It seems like it was going to be even overheating with those knives, but the rest of the team is there right behind him to back him up and get this 3v1 going. Benji, he's been good for this clutch. He's been good for these situations, but this one... A little bit more difficult as time runs out. Is a retake to deal with. He's got good damage. Unfortunately, that has not been enough for the round. Beautiful stun there. The fault line from Nazi secures him an assist. Flair will also hop in the assist column. Comey collects a kill. And it's now three in a row for Winthrop University. One of the conversations that we had for that final of the lower bracket was in Winthrop, that has always been good, right? They win those matches constantly. They made it all the way here, but something that they had to work on was a move that sometimes was going alone, mm -hmm. getting taken down, and then there was no response. The team was not able to be right behind him on time, but now we have Flair who's able to satchel in it and give that extra support, and everybody kind of been adapting to this. We got to see it on Monday, and we get to see you for that round too. Yeah, Moobs talked about it in saying, my team just sets me up. We, we, they understood just as much as we did, right? An outside perspective could see that Moobs is sometimes on an island. Ooh, Ollie oh, almost sent a, a few, uh, not to an island, but maybe into the clouds. Unfortunately, gets nothing there. It's the defense stacked heavy on the opposite side of the map. Slowly but surely work their way back towards the safe side. Not a whole lot to work with, but I mean, sticks and stones is seemingly all Northwood needs from map one to map two as Darkest finds that one. We saw a bunch of eco rounds on that first map, for, but on this one, it does become a lot more difficult. Lee goes down, no smokes for that brimstone and the rest is the other patient that the rest for the 4v3 can make. I mean, yeah, it's getting scary though, until Nazi finally gets his hands on the so round. Good. He'll find three of them and I'm sweating a little bit. I am sweating a little bit after that one. Winthrop, they eventually get it done. It looks scary there for a moment. Finally though, round five, Northwood will have a full buy. Rifles in hand, but look at those ultimates there, Dryad. Weak. And this is where it gets interesting. Early into the first couple rounds, we got to see a potential kill for Ferbsa, and this is something that he does so great. He is that player that is always going to be on that duelist role and going to be on this race for this scenario. When it comes to when it comes to the average damage that he's able to make, to getting those kills with the pain shells, to getting those kills even with that showstopper, he's going to be ready for it. So a swing around with a massive one for Northwood if they want to get something going over here. And they put an operator in the hands of Tip. We'll see if that can find some value as it leans out towards the B site for now. Winthrop seemingly threatening the top side of the map. Here in this drop position moves. Operator as well. We'll see what he finds. Spots one takes him down. Healthy as can be as he continues to push his way on through. Beautiful ultimate dropping the base there for Flair. He finds two kills. And this one, this one's done and dusted, Dryad. Now I was talking about Furbsab with that showstopper, but it was 
the side of Winthrop and Flair being able to secure two right there, give that space in a scenario that maybe changes something that we were mentioning, right? The support that you often see for moves. This time around, he was all by himself with the operator. It was all about the timing, making a little bit of noise towards Dish for him to swing and get the kill with the op. That's all the space that the side of Winthrop needed. And in order for, for the first time on this match, we get to see them forced to save. I mean, just really no option. Winthrop, economy across the board, economy of plenty. They're gonna go on the hunt. The dash doesn't get the job done. Comey there to collect two kills on the way out. Most importantly, continuing to damage this Northwood economy. The attacking side, something that before on this matchup, the first time that the two teams face each other for that best of five, we didn't get to see much of on the side of Winthrop. It was the the early disadvantage that they took on that defense side and they could not recover. So now it's a different story that they get to show some of the many ideas that they have with the Rolling Thunder that was available since that last round staying alive for this one and it's just been that space so clean for it Ooh, moves oh, getting slowed dude. down step gonna try his hand both duels out that way rolling thunder comes through ferbs uh, has been erased still defender so here on this b side is winthrop leading this way again the weapons aren't the best but the knives from dip could be everything they need as a couple get expended i mean but you get spotted towards dies and need to back up but two players there Trying to have an impact, it's so difficult. Breach, breach. Good shots there from A77, finding that kill onto Darkest. Is a 2v4 inside. And Benji is just so far from the play. There is still life in this one though. Blades are still available, now they're gone. Flair will find the next Ali. Only able to collect one in the endeavors. They quickly take position on this B site and Benji will be walking away across the map. Ultimate available, surely for another round. Can only really pray for some damage. But the economy is just so good on the side of Winthrop. They might even go hunting for Benji just cuz. I mean, they did that before in that last round. And there was economy for this one. There isn't, but still a Benji. That goes down in a sixth round in a row. Nothing to be found for Northwood. And we haven't seen the timeout. We haven't seen them even needing to do so for the first map, but this one, it's a crucial point that it gets to on the first half. Even with all the confidence that the squad has on the attacking side, you need to secure, you know, at least four or five. And it gets a little bit more risky. Yeah, there it is. There's a timeout, but actually coming through from Winthrop. Yeah, I'm trying to, now the conversation is, how do we keep this going, right? It, what we saw working in some of the buy rounds in catching Northwood off guard out towards the safe site, moves being aggressive. You can't do that now that moves has this operator. So I'd imagine there's going to be talks about how do we continue with this operator? How do we get moves into the play without being that tip of the spear? Or do we look to keep moves as the tip of the spear? Let this operator start to sing in, in one of the spots on the map and then make a, a play behind it. I think. You expect explosiveness from Winthrop University with this composition, the way that they play this map. It's very hard to do so when he's got that scope rifle. And even then, for Winthrop, for most of the maps that we get to see, this is a team that on the attacking side, they like to slow things down. They often are expecting that aggression from that defense, especially here in Fracture, right? If it's gonna happen, it's gonna be there. But on this map, they're giving no chances to do anything else. The map control early into the round just looks so beautiful. Even if it's gonna be the all the five players pushing from one side, they're making sure that the side for Yuto is gonna be able to catch somebody on the defense, making those rotations and making that job just a lot more difficult. And with no killjoys on the map, there's a lot more freedom with the orbital strikes as they're expecting some type of aggression out towards a main boom bot used and nobody's home there's a stack actually with four players close to the b side and, and this is something that they did before it was from a to b but not from b to a trying to take a little bit more of that north part of the map but again the cypher util is going to be so good for it a good shot there, not many spots, this could be, and he hits a crazy shot, he wants more, but Moobs will make sure he's limited to just the first two, but, I mean, damage done, Orbital Strike used, beautiful stun, this will be another one, surely Comey has no way out, 
And a round that was explosive out towards the A site ends with A77 left all in his lonesome in a 1v3. And when you have that info for Ali, it gets a lot easier to use that orbital strike. And that's a point here for this matchup. There's no kill juice. You don't have to save the ultimate. You can save it for when you hear that spike getting planted. Make sure that they cannot run away. Maybe a little bit of combination of utility with the kills. Finally, the round finally comes the way of Northwood as they get the first. And Northwood are finally on the board. And I mean, believe it or not, it comes off the back end of a Winthrop timeout, who again, uh, they had their deliberation about how do we keep this moving forward. I don't think you can... Uh, you can't, there's nothing, you can't calculate what Dip is about to do in that round, right? That first kill, sure, he's holding a tight angle, whatever it is. Flare comes flying through, Dip breaks his wrist to yeah. hit that second that kill. Nobody's insane, expecting that. That was insane, man. That was insane yeah. to see it. But uh, also definitely a weird time out that, that came from Winthrop. I was mentioning if you're expecting it from somebody he's in Northwood that haven't asked for any timeouts on this matchup just yet, yeah, but aggressive here with the Rolling Thunder is gonna be darkest. I managed to get two. And it's been seven rounds just about where Northwood haven't been able to make the right call in, in which part of the map they want to fight forward. They've been fighting for this space, but nobody's been home. Now they finally have a few players here, but after trading a couple of kills, they finally get punished for it. I know exactly where you are. Ooh, and that's going to give heaps of information out here to Winthrop. And with the possibility of Dip being behind and trying to get something, it was going to be difficult anyways with the Typher setup. But the new field that makes it pretty much impossible. Has to go all the way around as the same ultimate comes on the other side. A 3v2 to deal with Northwood on the lead. Spike not planted just yet in 45 seconds to work with. Yeah, that was Spike in hand and Benji gets a miracle kill through the smoke. Finding a free one. It's three players one tucked remaining. away in this one. I mean, not even three players need a dip, not a part of the equation as Darkest and Benji hold it down. And now things are starting to get scary. Winthrop are starting to hear the footsteps of Northwood as Northwood are creeping up behind him. And, and it goes back to you, something that we mentioned it is that momentum that Winthrop is able to get. And for how long are you able to hold it, right? Because we've seen it even on that first match. We remember a Lotus, we remember a Haven where it was a Winthrop that got that momentum. They held onto it, but sometimes they lose it right at the end. And it can be for this half, something that Northwood is trying to do as slowly all the players start to wake up. They get the win condition. They get those ultimates rotating more for them. Oh, what a play here. Judge in hand, but knives are even better as Ali. Gonna try and buy some space, buy some time. Both duelists look to go up, but they're ripped from the sky. Ferbsa. Collects two kills before he eventually gets traded. And again, an even position here. Last time Northwood found a kill onto Comey, who was holding the spike. This time they're allowed onto the site. And it gets messy. It gets a little bit more chaotic the more rounds that we get to see for the 3v3. Forces that swing, and Ali goes down. Yeah, Ali falls. Good util usage there. The Molly down forces his hand. And the position two players were looking that way. Rip Benji bringing up the rear. Yeah, out goes the Benji. cage. Unfortunately, out goes Benji and Winthrop. We're going to put another one here in the wind column. The op has been dropped. Dip. And to try his hand with the rifle. They've got economy to buy up into the next couple of rounds. As he stands inside the smoke, that'll be the end of it. Winthrop finally stopped this string of rounds put together by Northwood, and they find their seven. Uh, obviously, with this double duelist composition that you see from both of the sides, the attacking side has to be the best, but for Winthrop, you can see how much they've been preparing for this one. We got to see it a little bit yesterday, but it, the, the coordination is there, and something that we got to hear in the halftime interview before was a, a key point of making sure that you're not throwing those big rounds. Winthrop has done a good job. Part of it could have been even the timeout. And yeah, it, it forces and gives that round for Northwood, but the adaptation is always there. He's always proactive on the attacking side. And same for this defense. Looking in so many of these plays to play for that contact. What a shot there, Ferbs. Just a little high on the crosshair placement. Stinger. Can't quite do the job there for Darkest, but he finds a bit of damage as he backs away. A kill traded. Or, well, a kill traded for some damage, and it's favorable for Winthrop. Yeah, see inside of this milk. Make a choice, thunder. man. Make a choice, man. <laughs> Back and forth between the flash, the fall line, the rifle. Yeah. The Rolling Thunder Game's here is going to be available as well. And again, just Winthrop doing a good job of 
forcing that play for contact and then shutting down every single player that comes their way that time around towards this was Ferbsa. And they're still quiet here. Here comes that Rolling Thunder into the spawn. Darkest. Well, it's actually Ali who is not long for this world. Darkest allowed to survive behind the smoke. Stunned up but not taken down. Unfortunately, two of three players uh, have good weapons. Dark is still, is still sitting on that stinger, and that is not a weapon you want to have in a retake situation unless Dip can get you going nice and early, and when you challenge moves like that, you let him sit on the angle. He's going to make sure that you do not survive the round. Make sure that there's no chance for that one. An operator, though, in the hands of Darkest, trying to back up. Ends up getting taken down, and so is Benji. The eighth round here for Winthrop. And a ninth, maybe just around the corner, right? Finding those kills on the way out, Northwood have not been able to save anything. So they've been stuck in that teeter-totter, right? Of buy round, save round, buy round, save round. They put a couple together after a timeout, but now they're right back to it. This round is going to be Sheriff's. Stay down. And the Ecos that on this map for Northwood, they have not been the best. You're okay. good for a couple, Time but that is about it. Winthrop just ready for it. And you, you can tell that reset that has come through for this team. Maybe we didn't win on our first and best map, but this one can be the new best map that they have and so on. With four players now on the north part. And defense again, wanting to go aggressive. Moves waiting for it. It moves is the only one here. Things get weird, but he finds a kill. He's happy to have that one. Refuses to give up just yet, but he's pushed from the opposite side. So one and done is moves but a weapon now in the hands of dip ali has also gotten some damage dealt with that marshal but the site's been taken here for winthra my planet my ult's ready and on the other side of dark is it has to wait just for a little bit longer for everybody else on the team that tried and go for that pinch to come into the site a lot of util expended both incendiary and paint shells out. Northwood still finding ways to grab kills. Orbital Strike comes through as well. A tap onto the spike as A77 tries to fight his way back into this one. And Northwood, I mean, we talked about moves being a criminal, but Northwood is the one who's stealing away rounds. And stealing those final rounds that they have here on Fracture is what Northwood is trying to do. One more would be ideal, but uh, Winthrop that has not made those rounds easy at all for them. Even for this one, he takes a clutch. It takes those three kills from Ali to step up and make a difference. And, and I feel like this is now when you're looking at uh, the, the biggest almost fear that Northwood had is we played these maps so many times. We've gone into so many best yeah. of fives. We've gone to distance with a couple of teams. Teams really know what we play and how we play. And you can say, and you can tell that Winter has been starting it just that. Last round of the half. Herbs are looking to get aggressive. A flash will keep him at bay. Good dash to safety for moves. Out go the paint shells. And it's He's stuck. a bloodbath here inside Arcade. His flare will try it down with the rocket of his own. But everybody survives the base drop. Only one player dies. It's Comey to eventually fall. Winthrop start a player down and Darkest does it again. And that is massive as well. Forbes out stuck behind that and Darkest goes massive to help him out. And the shorty just not gonna be enough there. Beautiful rolling thunder. They've got the read and they close out the half flawlessly. Chasing four rounds are Northwood University. But it looked pretty darn good as they slowly started to get momentum. Dryad, look at the score lines for Northwood. Who, yeah. who is this? Th these are imposters in the seats right now for, for Northwood. They've got a lot to show us in this next half. They definitely do. And the attacking side is a strong side for Northwood, but definitely not a position that they've had to deal with so many times where they are not on the lead. Four rounds the lead. Winthrop looking to close this one out. Well, obviously in their fashion, tied up one to one. But while the teams strategize here at the half, let's learn a bit more uh, about Northwood from Darkest. To be like the target is honestly, it doesn't really phase me. It, it's nice to know that it kind of hypes you up when you hear the the crowd like chanting for another team or booing whenever you guys went around. It's kind of like, well, you know, that doesn't really affect me. You guys can keep doing it. It, it, it kind of just makes me want to beat you more, right? Prove you wrong kind of thing. Uh, so it honestly, it feels great. And they are ready to, uh, I guess, silence the haters and keep the underdogs at bay right keep them locked away dark is saying he feeds off of that energy and northwood are, are definitely the villains definitely the team to beat as well right everybody 
gunning for this squad. And we've seen this story before. We've seen Winthrop grab a map off of this team. We haven't seen that just yet. But once, if we do eventually get there, right, one-to-one -one score line, uh, Northwood aren't going to crack, right? That, I think, is when the pressure starts uh, to be put on, much like Winthrop on this defense are going to feel that double duelist pressure. Now Ferbsa and Dip get to control the pace as they, they mount their attacking side here momentarily. And if, you, and if you're a fan of Winthrop, you're hoping that this turns into the pistol round win, into that momentum to close out this map yeah. in the most dominant way possible because this is something that Northwood never had to deal with. Not being able to put up a fight in one of the maps and maybe having to deal with something that they never had to before. Those are kind mm -hmm. of the win conditions that you're looking for now on this defensive side. But also Northwood... I mean, we've talked about the land experience that they have. They have tier two experience and nobody else is able to match. They've also played, I mean, it seems like in every single difficult scenario against, with, with the world against them, and they're always able to come up on top. So Norfolk, let's see if they're able to do so once again now on the second half of Fracture. If four players on the top side of the map look to be quick out towards B, they're only gonna be met by one defender it's a77 who isn't even really set up the guy's got a sheriff here in the pistol round oh okay I that's, mean, why. that's all the setup you need baby <laughs> that's why that's why you only have that sheriff and he's able to be good for one but has to back up and nobody else is towards b so that means the attacking side of northwood you're taking this site and Northwood will grab the site, allowed the plant, but in that kill onto dip it was damage found onto Ferbs as well and ollie was not ready for that quickly Winthrop are here on the retake. Darkus and Benji can find a couple of kills to get things back in favor. Good paint shells keep players at bay, but look at this. Darkus assumes his position inside the defender spawn and steals away the round. And that was the four kills that he gets 37 HP throughout them. Nobody able to hit a single bullet against this guy and secures that round fifth one and the pistol for North with three and one on the pistol ones, the pistol rounds that we've seen so far. And it's gonna be from that expensive buy coming through. Three rifles potentially no that we're gonna be seeing through. And Benji, once again, going for the go, is going for the heavy util instead. Yeah, three rifles invested here. Come Two ghosts, out. Northwood. At really trying to pave the way for this snowball effect. They can win this round. Their bonus will be everything that they need with these rifles in hand. Good dash forward. A77 still finds them on the opposite side of the map. Make Spice it two. B. As we fight here in A main, A77 was holding things down for just a moment. It's good damage, but damage will not be enough here in round 14 as it belongs to Northwood. The idea there for Winthrop, they make it fast. It was good. It was an attempt of a pinch towards the southern part of the map, but the aggressive position as well the aggressive space that Northwood tried to take to make sure that pinch is not a possibility nobody else was going to go down to so the rifles they get to see another day and with that round three with the rolling thunder for darkest it's yeah. pretty good <laughs> yeah darkest happy to have that one uh, and much like you mentioned right three rifles come over uh, another one making its way into the fold so four rifles in what's supposed to be the bonus round they are looking to make sure and they can make this comeback swiftly here. Winthrop will try their hand with their first buy. A77, good with the Sheriff the last couple of rounds. Now has a Vandal Found you. to try and find the same success. And that's a great start playing off his own util. An attempt as well to take control of that north part by Winthrop. But three, then two players for the Cypher spawning them. But still a dip that goes down and Spike landed. Spike Planet, Spenji, the only one without a rifle flare. We'll find a second kill on this one. I mean, the attack, they're all off the side here, playing out towards Arcade. Benji hasn't been spotted. The dash comes through and moves. Will turn around and recollect what he had seen previously. Now Ferb's going to try his hand as he spams his way through the sky smoke. Comey on the spike kill. Starting to be found, though, for Northwood. As the spike will go halfway. Ollie just out of reach. Paint shells available, and you don't have time to give up these kills. Firmsa hangs on. Paint shells look to get it done. It's halfway as Ali will now try his hand, and Northwood do it again. With another 4v2. We've seen a couple of those where you have the man advantage for Winthrop and still is not enough to close it out. Moves with the time against him trying to make that clutch happen, but the swing just in time and too good. And out of nowhere, things get a lot closer, right? You get that bonus. It is a seventh round 
for Northwood and the economy broken, we can see a war with things were tied up. And you see it in the replay there. That is why Ferbs uh, regarded as the best. Didn't have his paint shells. Found a kill through smoke. Stop somebody Same. pushing and found another one. Gets the paint shells online and immediately uses that bit of util. Chips off more time on the clock. Forces the hand of Winthrop and eventually forces the round in favor of Northwood University who have reset this defense. And well, Nazi looked for a little bit, found some good damage, but pays for it with his life. And that is calling some rotation towards that A side, you see. Right there. Doesn't leave that burn some staying for a little bit longer. And that is exactly what Northwood wanted. Call some rotations, make that B entry just a little bit easier to them entering from arcade. And the spike is coming this way. Only one defender, but Comey proves to be just enough. The trap wire can call me sneak away from this one. He's got another smoke to play with. Incendiary available. We'll see if that finds any value here in this round. Neural theft also available for A77. So should they need information if they could find a body warm enough? But that one body is being held on to. Ali won't give up this spot for free. Flash comes out. Three players push this way. Flare gets one back and two for two is where we land. But unfortunately, the weapons still aren't the best. Rolling Thunder comes through and finds absolutely nobody with the blades. Dark is up close and personal and that shorty. Man, that <laughs> weapon is just way too much. As Comey backed away by the aftershock. And he is not long for this world. It's low HP, but there's just no way back in for this guy. Unfortunately, Winthrop, they'll try their hand. The shorty won't get it done. Benji does, however. And from an 8-4 half dryad, we are all tied up. And even though it was a little bit more expensive there with only two players staying alive, the plan was able to be executed. The way that Northwood went it from beginning to end, they get some info, somebody's gonna be pushing Arcade. They hide behind that box, and with that, even as the swings come through, the duels go the way of this attacking squad. Showstopper here gonna be available, but a couple more that are gonna be up and the table right as well. There's gonna be at least Orbital Strike and even the new throw that for that extra info. A chance here to take that lead. We'll see if the high ground has been read. It is, but Verbsa, unfortunately, does not find the better half of Flare. Dark is there for the trade, and A77 continues to remain consistent, finds his one, but how much more can they do? The three remaining attackers here on the top side of the map, they're trying to walk their way out, but Nazi's not gonna let him. And now is when the fast pace doesn't actually work out. A lot of those individual duels end up getting lost. The 2e4, and they've won those before, but dip goes down, it's all up to Darkest. And this guy's done crazier things. We have seen Darkest do some crazier things. Uh, we've also, I don't know if we've seen crazier trap <laughs> wires. <That's, laughs> this one, that's uh, Just making sure. Yeah, 100%. It's a <laughs> good geometry there from A77, showing us how things work with the Cypher. Either way, A77 remains consistent, finds three huge kills so in a round that meant more than anything. It was just four in a row, plus the, the two in a row, right? So six in a row uh, from fir first half to second half for Northwood University. Winthrop seemed like they did not have an answer for it. They finally get rifles and they put another in the wind column. They stopped the bleeding just a bit. But not only the rifles, also the operator for moves, something that was not able to keep up. be a possibility yeah. at all after losing that bonus, losing those couple rounds in a row. Watching now moves smoke. with the operator on that defensive side. You don't know where this guy is going to be. This round is going to be a completely alone, but it's a heavy stack because of that. Just waiting around towards B, giving that space a willing to play around the info that they get and that push that comes from the side of Northwood. What is Dip hoping for here? Two away from the blades will be allowed the first orb. We'll see if he can go around the world for another four, obviously, to pick up here on Fracture. But for now, Northwood hold their ground on the top side of the map. Spike still leaning this way as well. Moves is slowly taking space. And because of all of this silence, Winthrop actually think, yeah, that the play is happening out towards the safe site, but that's not what's going on. Flare now gonna try his hand. Rocket comes through, doesn't find the kill. It's good damage, but it's not enough to find the frag. Good damage in response, though, through the walls. Comey gonna find the kill. It allows for Flare to go back up top and off the top ropes. He finds a kill onto Ferbsa, but the trades are there. 
player was the only player that stayed towards this B side. Was able to secure one for satcheling just on top. But going aggressive and dark has just insane once again. One tap, one kill. That's all you need. For the 3v2, 877 and Komi, the last one's alive. Yeah, 877 still here and will still try his Watch hand. He's gonna go fishing looking for Darkest, but they gave up absolutely nothing. And it looks like Ollie might be back in the way. Looking to play lineups. He gets Any caught down. with Util out, Ball's but he ready. still gets the incendiary down. Attack on the spike. Aftershock to come through as well. And again, it's a problem with the clock. And now a problem with uh, Komi only anything. having 36 HP. And yeah, he's gotta get out of dodge. All the ults, all the util used on the side of Northwood University, but they do so in securing the round. Insane calling for those rotations. Uh, uh, that was what really secured that round for the side of Northwood. And once again, they tied things up nine to nine. But it was a stack that we saw early on with four players. No, nobody playing up close, nobody playing towards tower. They were playing more reactive. They don't hear anything. They didn't spot anything. They go all the way A. Eh? And even though those rotations here on Fracture are quick, they're not quick enough to secure it. For the last couple players alive. Once again, another chance to see if Northwood can take that lead. Or is going to be continuing that domination of that back and forth for Winthrop that could eventually close out the map for them. And three alts available on the side of Winthrop. A77's been sitting on that Neural Theft for quite some time, but an orbital strike and flare with that showstopper. Could be potent in a retake or trying to stop or maybe split up a Northwood push here who shows early signs of aggressions out towards B. A smoke keeps him at bay and all five on the bottom side of the of map, only Moves is here to receive. And it was the same as that last round, but Moves now being the right place, the right time. And a crazy angle that picks so kill that has to work. A dip out on the site, Moves will give up his position. Nobody here planted on the A site for the defense, so it has been taken with ease by Northwood University, and this puts you in a scary spot. Ooh, Ali looking to commit that one there. Orbital Strike won't find enough damage to grab the kill. Does force him to push forward just a bit. Moves goes aggressive, and Dark is there to deal with him. Did now gonna try his hand. Right click goes wide. Flare to answer back. Alt for alt with a kill feed. It's a carnival of death here on the A site. But who is pushing the buttons? It's Winthrop University. One player ahead is Verbsa. Tries his hand at the first. Util out, and Komi's on the swing. But it doesn't matter. They're shut down. Nazi with a huge round. Welcome back to the server. The IGL of Winthrop picks up three, and Winthrop grabbed the lead again. A clean retake in that green bite after that Relling Thunder comes in from Nazi. But the two players separated, isolated, and a firm side that had to look to the right side, to the left side, and it was not enough. It was not in time. So, yeah, we keep this back and forth. But then Winthrop getting those double digits first on this map of Fracture. Oh, and the ideas were good. Northwood, they had a good indication of where that jet could be on the other side. Get smoked, they get that spike planted. And even in a weird positioning, knowing the Orbiter Strike was going to come through. Everything seemed to be according to plan, but the retake was just way stronger. And now the weaponry. A, a scary arsenal that uh, we were introduced to this arsenal on Haven. It was Ferbsa, however, who had the Guardian in hand. This time, Dip gonna be wielding that rifle. The rest of the team just upgraded pistols. Good Sky Smoke out from Comey. We'll slow the attack down for now. We'll see when that go button is eventually hit. Oh, and we've seen so many different versions of how the early rounds, the, the first time of the, the round ends up looking like for Northwood. But it's quiet for this one, and it is a Benji that is was completely left alone on B, slowly trying to get space, but giving that respect. Dip on the angle. Ooh, op shot from Moobs. That one doesn't land. The second one also goes wide. Northwood counting their blessings as Ferbsa and Ali allowed onto this site. Trap wire spotted once more. A77. 
Uh, the value there still Three escaping him here, and it's been quiet to get a start of a finally that spike. Looking to get planted. Look at the delay though. Aftershock came through. Darkest couldn't get it down. Rolling Thunder now as the fight inside the spawn ensues. Spike planted. Winthrop working against the clock as Comey goes aggressive, finds the head of Darkest, but wants some more. Smokes are coming down. The push onto the side is here from Winthrop, and everybody starts to get cut down as Dip will try and hang on, but he is too far away from the action. Seven kills in the last two rounds for Nazi as they find another for Winthrop University. And again, when this guy has to step up, he's gonna do so for that 11th round to go the side of Winthrop. A clean retake once again, as it seems like the squad, the yeah, they struggle at the beginning, they lose the bonus on the second half, but then they start to adapt, and this is something that is all the credit to Nasty, leaving these rounds off to the retake and overwhelming that pressure that Postplan and the Northwood wanted to bring to them. This is what Winthrop was doing yesterday, or was doing on Monday when they were playing Fisher. It was leaving those retakes and expecting those aggressive positions across all, every single map that we get to see, and it ended up working out for them. That's why they're here. And Northwood will have another chance at it here. Economy not great, so walking out of this one, if you do so, in loss. Gonna be put in a rough spot the last round of the map, but none of that matters now. Flair gonna try his hand, finds a kill on the Darkest, immediately answered back though. And I mean, Northwood aren't out of this one just yet. Paint shells come across the site here. On the B site, Nazi sits on a Rolling Thunder aftershock. On Ali, doesn't actually land on him. Nazi does it again! Seven kills in the last two rounds, puts two more together, leaves it all up to Benji. Two players still alive, both of which pushing through this B site. And Benji gonna have to try and hang on. A tap on the spike as the op will hold the angle. Nazi just giving himself up, standing on top of it, allows for the spam. Benji gonna have to do it again though. Cam is out, moves is off. Takes on the cam, does it once more. Benji refusing to give up the angle. Moves gonna have to make the play. He pushes through with the shorty, but Benji gets it done. No way, that's how he plays out at the end. Moves goes in, has to play aggressive, and ends up getting taken down. The shorty too strong as a secondary weapon in Northwood. They get to stay alive on this map, avoiding that map point from Winthrop. What a play once again from Benji, the player that we mentioned in the map number one was a key part of the success, and here is being the exact same thing. Wow, that is heartbreaking there. Winthrop wishing they could get that round back, but wow, yeah. have to put it behind them as once more Northwood pressure this B site, two defenders here in A77 and Comey. How can they deal with this one? Nazi quick on the response, but I mean, even quicker up in the tower. Both duelists are here. They force A77 away. The boom bot not quite giving up his position just yet. Burps to find the first. Call me surely going down next. A two for one trade as Nazi postures here on this site. But Northwood, they second guess this push and they look to go elsewhere. And they take that tower control early on. They get that one kill into it. A77 that was doing everything right, it seems like, but now they cut noise. Oh, In this spot, the player is still so winnable. A 3v3 as Flair gets that one. Yeah, uh, a round, however, right with 50 seconds on the clock, you cannot let Northwood plant. Orbital strike available, incendiary, aftershock, all the util they need for the post and they're walking off the B-side, Dryad. They, they force those rotations as well. The only one making noise here, giving those steps, is Benji. That Sentinel, and in the meantime, that spike is gonna be planted towards B. Benji ends up going down. 30 seconds left. But the retakes recently have been so good for Winthrop. They can win this one too. No way, Night Foul, Darkest, what are you doing, buddy? No he gets way. immediately taken down. Flare will follow, and Moobs will try his hand. A 1v2. Away from map point versus a 2v1. Away from tying us up. And Moobs has an operator. He spotted Ali. Ali gonna... No, he doesn't give himself up. Moobs is letting it slip away. A stun will keep him at bay. But one HP Dryad. He is... I mean, what do you do? Do you save the op? You have zero credits going into next round. There's just nothing. You have to save the op. As the time was even running out, the spy got planted. And North would they get to once again, make things even 11 to 11. What a play. And again, it is calling and forcing those rotations from the defense that ends up allowing that spike to be planted. I mean, the plays are so aggressive for Northwood. They go right into the spawn. 
The defense not even expecting it at all. Knife at hand gets to darkest. Uh, the star player here as well. There. I mean, and the cherry on top is in that post plant, Darkest went and, and took care of all the work, right? They didn't have to use any of the U2. They didn't have to use the orbital strike. That is still available for either another post plant for Northwood or to allow Dip and Ferbsa to safely push some of these areas, right? Yeah. There's so many options. We talked about it earlier. With no Killjoy, the freedom of the orbital strike it's it's endless the options that you have and and ali is still sitting on that one that could be huge to swing this game in favor of northwood for the first time dryad and knowing and looking at the the way that ali has been playing this guy is so aggressive he's playing controller you expect him to play a little bit a little bit more far back but he's going in so maybe even expecting what you said out of the many possibilities is using that with a strike for example to go into tower to go into main make sure that nobody on the defensive side is holding up close especially with the danger that moves can be with his operator that he got to save yeah, it's northwood here taking a timeout as we are tied up at 11. A reminder that map one was a pretty dominant map. It was uh, not something we were expecting. Winthrop give that one up six to 13 in favor of Northwood University. We jump into map two and things are completely different. Both teams putting it on here on Fracture and it's early aggression with the operator moves. Looking for something out towards B main with A77 in tow. And this is different. How many rounds have we seen that end up on that B side, right? The possibility is still going to be there, but the heavy presence towards A means there's more space, more space for the defense to get this. And there's a trap right behind the digital players that can be doing the wrap around. Yeah, Komi gets one too. I mean, that should that kill should just not happen, right? They know that Komi is there. They jump onto the site. Dip gets dealt with. Fortunately, it's been traded. Uh, even is better in this Five round for Northwood as everybody on Winthrop starts to work their way on the bottom side there's of the map. There's three there. There's just three players. Oh, beautiful shot. So moves. I mean, moves one of the three. But look at this orbital strike used beautifully. And Benji there to capitalize off of it. Last round, it was one HP. This time, it's seven. And moves is forced to save once more. Benji on that position right behind and tucking that corner. He was pretty much set up for a one and done. Yet he still manages to get two. There's a little bit of chaos. That orbital strike helping out. Match point. But a Northwood that finally turned things around. They take the lead for the first time, and it is for that map point. Yeah, for the first time, and it's round 23. The, the map that was seemingly going the way of Winthrop as soon as they had a grasp on this Northwood attack, and they let it slip away. Northwood, however, round after round, now jumping back into a timeout and the thing that hurts the most i mean you look at it here maybe a77 has something cooked up for us but uh unbeknownst to our viewers he's sitting on a bucky on the cypher that guy's gonna have to do something crazy moves obviously not being able to keep the operator puts a rifle back in his hands but boy that round hurt oh yeah and it's been all about the mental games the the igling that has been so clean for Northwood to make sure those plays in that mid round are shining the brightest, especially when it matters, right? Especially when it comes to taking that lead in the last round of regulations, trying to close it out too. That's why they take this time up too. You don't want to go overtime. You've gone overtime before against Winthrop, against Fisher. That cannot be the case for this one. And Norvo's giving a best chance at it. A Winthrop was again so close, but losing three rounds in a row, that definitely hurts. And now the setup comes through, right? A77 tosses out a trap wire. Going to play across the map from that one. I'm paying attention to that Bucky. If he can find some semblance of value for this team. That goes there. Otherwise, this is looking like a Northwood victory. Moob's not necessarily left on an island, but only two defenders here. Slowly but surely, Nazi starts to work his way back over. Ferbsa steps okay. up. Yeah, tower's been uncontested as the boom bot will come through. And all the ultimates tossed out here. Orbital Strike comes through. Moves is just sitting right on the inside. It's a bit of friendly fire, and he stays the whole time as Comey collects the wrong type of kill. It's all going wrong. Here on the flank comes the Sheriff-Bucky combination. And Dryad just seems like all she wrote. 
and there's no way it goes down like that, right? Moob's getting taken on by the Orbit Strike of his own teammate. But that all that space, that 4v2 to work with, but now on the other side, North with the advantage, and Flare looking for something with a showstopper. And Spike is down. Nobody in close proximity of the showstopper. Uh, Ollie gonna try his hand. Standing. Decapitates Flare. Now it's all up to Comey. Dip sits him down. And Northwood from the depths of an 8 4 half bring it back. They claw their way. And 13 11 is where they land. Two maps the lead, Dryad. Two maps and one more to go for the side of Northwood. That is unbelievable. And I know we talked about the experience that Northwood has. This is where it shows. When yes. they are behind four rounds, they win that bonus, they get some momentum, they make things even, but they take that lead for the last four rounds in a row. Completely unstoppable. And with the timeouts that we got to see, we never got to see them before. They used it pretty much back to back. And they're able to secure a massive win on the map. Well, even in Winthrop's timeouts, right? Winthrop was the one at 6-0 taking a timeout. Northwood got the dub. They do it again. Northwood. Northwood utilizing the timeout. I would love to go back at the end of the day, or maybe somebody's already been doing it, and look, right? We, we praise coaches who have uh, insane percentages of converting rounds after a timeout and, and Northwood took every advantage yeah. in all of them there and they're able to get it done 13 to 11 now you think right we're two maps into this one that is crushing you could see it on the players faces it was crushing for Winthrop to lose this fraction it was crushing and it seems like that has been the the story when we saw moves we saw it after the after the first map we saw him he was a little bit more quiet he was kind of looking mm -hmm. down and he's a pretty calm player but you saw that and now you see him looking down yeah. you gotta wonder how this is gonna play out for what could even and be the last map. Yeah, this could be it. I know Sully predicted the 3-0. We're still a map away from that one, and there's a lot to talk about on Fractured, right? We could talk for forever, but that is not our job. <laughs> We're going to send things back to the analyst to break that map down. All right, it was a slog of a map here on Fracture for map number two, but it goes the way of the number one squad in the nation, Northwood up 2-0 against Winthrop. Uh, Degon here along with Gomper Soli, and joining us from Fisher College Navy is Logan. Welcome to the desk, man. And as we take a look at some of the stats here, uh, tell us your thoughts here on map number two. Well, I mean... With the start of the map, Winthrop came out looking like they looked against us. You know, they were playing their game. They were playing aggressive. You know, they lost a couple of rounds there at the end of the half, and they started, you know, getting nervous, it looked like. They were falling off a little bit, and they were, you know, losing some rounds that should have gone their way. Yeah, I, I really think that with Winthrop, they came out confident. Like, they were taking fights really early against North. We saw a lot of early clashes uh, on, in arcades specifically. Like, both teams were trying to combo the fault line to get map control and a lot of duels. And Winthrop did what they did against you guys the, uh, on Monday. They were waiting and drawing and sucking in the util from Northwood. And then they were responding with their own. Like, there are multiple times in B tree specifically where Northwood would drop a smokes and a fault line, send a nade. And everyone on Winthrop would kind of sit back over towards attacking spawn and, and wait for that util to come before they would issue their own response. And that's where you got moves. And that's where you got the flair that we really wanted to see. And that's what we wanted to see, getting moves going. And we got to see that a ton here in the first half. This has been the win condition for Winthrop the whole time. He was doing so well, especially in that beginning half. And, uh, you know, you really got to see him shine on Fracture. And I'm not going to lie to you, a big portion of that, again, Nasi was shining as well. So that duo that we talked about and kind of uh, putting that together and how they can achieve bigger goals, it really shone through. But once, it, you know, obviously there were some hiccups there for moves that, again, led them down that trail where it got harder. Well, before we get those hiccups, we have a replay here in round six of just kind of showing the dominance and how this first half went. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will be honest, Winthrop, this was like the confident side that we really wanted to see from them. And, and they played patient, they waited. Northwood began to really make some strong adaptations, but that, was, that wasn't until after the timeout where they got time to sit back. But this was a Winthrop that we were just saying, sitting back, waiting, drawing in util, and then issuing a response after Northwood had dumped all this util into them. Yeah, back on number one, uh, map number one, it was on the defensive side when they tried to clear out uh, Ferbsa without checking the corners on A long. Oh we saw that start to happen in round number two, and you, those are some down, down faces right there on the Winthrop side. You saw after the round, head in hands from your star player. Yeah. Logan, you've been there before when things are tough or, you know, the op starts going away. How do you battle back from something like that? 
For me personally, I usually, you know, if I'm missing and, you know, my teammates can all feel that too, I usually try to, you know, get aggressive somewhere and get that first pick, get that confidence back, and it, you know, builds up the rest of my team as well and not just me, so. That's a good point there. In round 19, this is the one where we wanted to highlight this was the close round that we thought, all right, double digits, whoever wins this one, will take it. This, this was the key round for Windup that everyone felt like we, we were like, dude, they won the game. This was the critical round. It reset Northwood. It opened up so many opportunities for Windup to close this out. They were two rounds away from getting to map point. But whiffs started to come through, and that's where the pressure from moves started to mount. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about those whiffs. At some point, you know, looking at that off, looking at what it really had to offer, at the beginning, it did outweigh what Northwood was giving in, but then at some point, it really just wasn't working out. And, you know, again, uh, those whiffs that we got to see uh, just moves not really playing up to those expectations. That's where we start to come in and start to question, is this off the play? Because it felt like they shone a lot more on uh. that blade storm. It was a super unfortunate. Plays like these really do change the game. A rough one. Man, uh, you catch a lot of us here at the desk. If, if the camera was on, it's all of us were like, oh no! <laughs> Moves again, led the way there. Players actually had the most, uh, I think, ACS, but like, you saw when they were rolling, it was the move show. He tried again, even in, I think, uh, that 2v1 situation against Cypher, tried to pull off the uh, dash updraft play, missed with the short. Got he wasn't that. able to pull that one off. It's really tough to come back from something like this one. If you're in the huddle right now, Logan, what are you saying? You know, you just got to remind yourselves, you know, play our game. In that first half, you know, they were playing their game and they were taking these rounds, these crucial rounds. And then, you know, once they got nervous, they started going back to what they did on Haven where they were like trying to find Ferbsa or trying to find Dip and, you know, playing into what Northwood wanted them to do. So, you know, just remind yourself, keep playing the way that you know how to play and you, you can take this still. So. But you're going into this map three, and you can see here on the player cams, like Ferbs, uh, or apologies, Moves, it's just, he's he's feeling it right now, and, and not in, in the way that you want. As an opera yourself, Logan, it takes a big mental reset. You're down 0-2. You have to do the almost impossible thing. We never see reverse sweeps. If you're the coach for, for Winthrop, what are the words you're saying to a guy like Moves to get him back? Because you know what it's like to be the guy that misses those op shots sometimes. I mean, you just have to, you know, remind him how good he is. He knows he's a great player. And, and, you know, you need to, like, hit that back into his head. Like, listen, it's a new map, new game. You still have time to, you know, bring this back. Yeah, it might be hard, but, I mean, they beat us. They've been through hard games, so I believe in them. So looking to map number three, it'll be split here for Winthrop. This is Winthrop's pick. Remember, Winthrop pick Haven didn't quite work out. Almost stole that map away from Northwood there on Fracture. Not exactly 13 to 11, a tough one. Now over to split. Yeah, I, I actually want to ask you, Logan, you know, you played against this team. You got to see their, their resolve when it came to losing these rounds and coming back on it. So I'm thinking for split, uh, do you see moves? Do you see all of these players really taking that step up? I think they can. I mean, they played really well against us on split. We barely took that game, but their defense was really hard for us to do anything against. And I think if they remind themselves to play like that, I, I can see them, you know, at least taking this map back. And after that, Icebox, so who knows? Like, yeah. how, all right, so yeah. this is the question that everyone wanna know. How much were people practicing Icebox since we're still on a patch from before? It was, we couldn't find Icebox scrims. I oh mean, my no gosh. one's playing this. <laughs> everyone's, you know, everyone's looking towards Bind, so I don't, I really don't know how Icebox will look. So all right, well, again, you gotta get to that point here on Split. It's been a tale of two Winthrops. It's the Winthrop that kind of was leading up to the C-Val Championship and the C-Val, uh, uh, and then the Winthrop that we saw uh, Monday here against uh, Fisher College. It's gonna take a little bit more of that old one, or will Northrop continue to hold on to the crown as the best team in college Valorant? We'll find out after the short break. Don't go anywhere. Fortunately, the knives have been dealt with. When they're hoping to get a bit more. I mean, Perp gets another one on the way out. Two kills. The way of the raise here for Northwood. Flair, though, fights his way in. Oh, no, no, it gets weird for a second. I mean, yeah, it's getting scary, though, no, until Nazi finally gets his hands on the Don't round. He'll find three of them. As can be, he continues to push his way on through. Beautiful ultimate. And the shorty just not going to be enough there. Beautiful rolling thunder. They've got the read, and they close out the half. Beautiful shot, so moves. I mean, moves one of the three, but look at this orbital strike used. 